హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఈ పాఠశాల దిస్ ఇస్ డాక్టర్ బిఏ మురళీధర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ టెక్స్టైల్ టెక్నాలజీ ఏసీ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ అన్నా యూనివర్సిటీ చెన్నై దిస్ ఇస్ ద మాడ్యూల్ ఇన్ విచ్ వీల్ బీ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ ఫ్యాన్సీ వీవ్స్ ది ఫ్యాన్సీ వీవ్స్ ఆర్ వీవ్స్ అపార్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ ది రెగ్యులర్ బేసిక్ వీవ్స్ ద ప్లెయిన్ ద ట్వెల్ అండ్ ద సాటైన్ విచ్ హ్యాస్ బీన్ ఆల్రెడీ డిస్ డెలబరేటెడ్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ మాడ్యూల్స్ ద ఫ్యాన్సీ వీవ్స్ డిఫర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద బేసిక్ వీవ్స్ ఇన్ ద డిజైన్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ the patterns and the texture of the cloth the manufacture of fancy weaves are costlier than the regular basic weaves because its manufacture requires additional attachments such as the special loom attachments whereby you require additional control devices are necessary to produce these fabrics competitively now let us discuss the construction of few of the fancy weaves which are popularly used in the industry fancy twill under the fancy twill the first category of twill which will be discussed is the large diagonals this fancy weave is constructed by combining two or more regular twill weaves to form a large diagonal as such these large twills require more number of heel shafts for its manufacture the chief points to be considered while constructing large diagonals are to suitably join the small twills to select suitable weaves that are sufficiently different from each other and to give each twill weave sufficient space to give the large twill a distinct appearance the construction of large diagonals is illustrated in figure 1.1 this figure is developed using a 3 up 1 down twill and a 1 up 3 down twill the entire weave repeats on 21 ends and 21 pegs now in the design the total design repeats on 22 ends and 22 picks the view marks are marked shown in the the into marks the into marks have been blocked up and that's how the large diagonals are constructed the second uh, variety of twills are the shaded twills these fancy twills are yet another variety of weaves constructed by combining two or more small twills in which the twill float length increases or decreases figure 1.2 depicts the shaded twills composed of four twill weaves repeating on five threads which are arranged in the order of four up one down three up two down two up three down and one up four down weave the weave repeats on 20 ends and 20 picks in its construction the 20 ends and 20 picks are marked and then the twills are arranged in such a way that the uh, shade uh, effect either increases or decreases along the diagonal line the third variety of uh, the fancy twills are the figure twills the figure twills are arrangement of small spots or figures that are at the same angle as the ordinary twill and the spot of figure may be repeated many times along the diagonal line An example of the figure 12 is illustrated in figure 1.3 where the spots are repeated four times and the complete repeat of the twill is repeating on 12 ends and 12 picks. So you can see the diagonal block repeating on 3 by 3 along the right hand diagonal line and then the regular weave repeats alongside. And then the next variation of the fancy weave is the diamond weaves. The diamond designs are regarded as the extension of twill weave. These weaves are symmetrical about the vertical and horizontal axis and can be constructed economically with the aid of a point draft. True diamond weaves <coughs> converge into a vertex and can be developed by either indicating a diamond base and building up the design symmetrically or by employing a vertical weave twill or zigzag lifting plan along the draft. In this module the second method of constructing the diamond weave is discussed. Figure 1.4 illustrates the basic one up three down twill and the same twill is arranged at zigzag and vertically zigzag and horizontally at B and C respectively. If B is taken as the draft and C as the lifting plan the diamond design D will result as indicated below. The full repeat of the diamond repeats on 12 ends and 12 picks. So the, the figure here in the A represents 1 up 3 down 4 12 which has been uh, 
arranged in vertical and horizontal order at B and C and further if B is taken as the lifting plan and C as the draft, the diamond design is depicted as shown in D. Unlike diamonds, the dipole weaves are symmetrical above the di diagonal axis and are not constructed on the pointed drafts. Dipers are produced using herringbone twills. A well-balanced dipole weave produced using 3-up and 3-down twill is shown in figure 1.5. The full weave repeats on 12 ends and 12 picks. Here you can see the diagonal along the diagonal line the weaves are reciprocating. Okay. Moclino is the next fancy weave. The Moclino weaves, as the name implies, produces effects similar to lino or gauze weaves producing produced using dope heels. Two kinds of structures are generally produced. The first referred to as the perforated fabric which produces imitation open gauze effect and the second is referred to as the distorted thread effect which produces effects similar to imitation net lino style. The perforated fabric mock lino weave producing imitation gauze effect is illustrated in figure 2.1. The weave is constructed by reversing a small unit, in this case a 3 by 3 unit. The weave repeats on 6 ends and 6 bricks. So as you can see in this is figure 2.1, a small plus mark on the left hand corner and repeating the opposite is repeated on the top and on the, on the right hand side. The distorted thread effect. In this weave, the threads of either the warp or weft or both warp and weft may be arrange it to distort certain threads to produce an imitation gauze weave effect. One method is illustrated in figure 2.2 where the ground structure is plain and the distorted 4th and 11th ends float over the plain picks but pass under the 4th and 11th pick. Whereas the distorted 4th and 11th pick float over one group of plain ends and under the next group in alternate order. The distorted ends take up more warp compared to the ground threads. As such, the, are, so they are placed in a separate beam. The distorted view below is represented on 28 ends and 14 picks. So in this view, you can see that the 4th and the 11th ends are the distorted ends and similarly, the 4th and the 11th end picks are distorted picks. The 4th and 11th ends, once again, the 4th and 11th lengths we float over the plain, uh, plain picks and under the play, under the thing, whereas the 4th and the 11th uh, pick alternately float over and under the warp ends. Huckaback. The structure of a typical huckaback weave consists of plain weave and intermittent loose floats. The firmness and the hard weaving wearing qualities of the weave are attributed to plain structure, whereas the loose floats aids good moisture pickup. The six pick diamond huckaback weave repeating on 10 ends and six picks illustrated in figure 3.1. So in the six picks you can see that the first five ends and work in a different order and the second five ends are the repetition but in a different style. So it is you got floats at the bottom with the plain ends at the on the top and similarly on the right hand side you got plain end adjacent to the floats and the float on top of it. Thereby the structure gets both uh, rigidity and floats which are good for the uh, material which has got required both structural rigidity and floats to absorb the moisture. Crepe weave. Crepe weaves are those weaves that do not contain any prominent twill line or any other effect. A crepe woven fabric gives a typical granular or minute pot speed seed effect to touch. The crepe weaves can be constructed in a number of different ways. One of the simplest being adding marks to in a certain order to the satin base weave. The construction of a crepe weave on an 8 thread satin, regular satin weave is illustrated in figure 4.1. The weave repeats on 8 ends and 8 picks. 
the cross marks in the V represents the satin base, whereas the small circles are marks added in a definite order around the satin base. Now here in the figure you can see the into marks are the eight thread satin working on a three move to the right, whereas the circles are the crepe marks which are added around the al along the, the into marks to produce a granular effect or the crepe weave effect. Right. The next fancy weave is the honeycomb. The honeycomb structure produces cell-like appearances on textile. The floating threads and the tightly woven threads form ridges, ridges and hollow spaces. Both the warp and the web threads float freely on both sides. This type of weaves are best suited for toweling materials. Honeycombs are of two cloths, two classes. One is classified as the ordinary honeycomb and the other one is called as the Brighton honeycomb. Ordinary honeycombs are honeycomb weaves that produce same weave effect on both sides of the cloth and in most cases produce using a pointed draft. A Brighton honeycomb are honeycombs which forms the cellular effect on only one side of the cloth and require a straight draft to be constructed. Ordinary honeycomb weave. The construction of an ordinary honeycomb weave on an 8 thread is illustrated in figure 5.1. First, the diagonal marks are introduced from left to right, then from right to left as shown in figure A. Thereafter, one of the diamond spaces is filled up and the other is left blank as shown in figure B. The weave repeats on 8 ends and 8 picks. So in this figure you can see the diagonal marks being introduced from the left corner to the right corner and in the right corner from one box one more up to the left to the left corner box. Then in the next figure B you can see that the diamond marks being introduced by solid blocks. One of the blocks is filled up and the other is left empty so you get the diamond effect on both face and back side of the fabric. Yes. Brighton honeycomb. Brighton honeycomb weaves usually repeat on threads in multiple of four. The construction of a 16 thread Brighton honeycomb is depicted in figure 5.2. First, the diagonal marks are introduced from left to right and then from right to left and a double row of marks are introduced as shown in A, thereby creating a diamond base. Marks are then added to the double row to form small warp diamonds in the right and left hand corners of each diamond space as shown in B. The float length that is the strength central thread of the each spot is one thread less than half the number of threads in the full repeat. So in this case the design repeats on 16 ends and 16 picks so half the number of 16 ends is 8 so 8 minus 1 is 7. So the maximum float length of these uh, diamonds would be around 7 threads. So in this view below you can see the into marks being introduced diagonally first from left to right and then the double row of marks is introduced from right to left. Yeah. Bedford cord weave. This class of fancy weave produces prominent longitudinal warp lines with fine sunken lines in between. The method of constructing ordinary bedford cord weaves is illustrated in figure 6.1a to c. The full weave repeating on 12 ends and 4 picks. As depicted in figure a, first the plain weave marks are introduced on a pair of warp ends at intervals. The number of ends between the pair of plain weaves, plain ends are varied depending on the width of the cord required. For example, if the width of the cord required in the next figure 6.1b, marks are introduced on the first, second, third and fourth pick in an alternate order as shown in the figure. Then the design is completed by introducing the plain marks as shown at C. PK weaves. PK is a French word meaning quilted. This weave produces a fabric with ridges called cords. The PK structure consists of plain fabric composed of one series of warp and the web threads with stitching ends placed on a separate beam. 
frequent intervals, the tight stitching ends are interwoven into the plane as plane face weaves to form indentations. PK structures forming continuous indentation or sunken lines in the horizontal direction of the cloth are termed as uh, welts. The construction of the ordinary weld structure is illustrated in figure 7.1 A and B. The first stage of the weave repeats on 6 cents and 6 picks is represented in A. A plain mark on the face fabrics are indicated with cross marks and the stitching ends are shown in grey colour. The VAR threads are arranged in the order of two face to one stitching and the complete design indicated at B. The solid marks on stitching ends indicate the lifts of the tight stitching ends into the plain face for two consecutive picks. In this design, there are four picks between the indentations along the length of the V. So as you can see, the grey marks are the tight stitching warp whereas the other ends are the plain warp ends and the stitching ends are lifted to along the face uh, warp ends for two picks in this PK structure. So let us just conclude this module on fancy views. In summing up this module, let us see what are the things which we have covered under this module. This module we have taken care of only some of the popular fancy views which are used commercially and which are popular commercially. Uh, this module is not limiting to all the fancy views which are available because there are a host of fancy views available and which is beyond the scope of this module to be included to include each and every fancy view here. As such we have limited our module discussion to select few of the fancy views which are very popular and are produced commercially to a very large extent. Uh, we have covered the large diagonals, uh, the shaded and the figure 12 weaves which are developed by altering the arrangement of the basic small 12 weaves. Uh, this uh, fancy weave is again followed up by the, the diamond weaves and the dipo weaves uh, the which are again the for extension of the 12 weaves uh, and then further the construction of uh, the moklino weave hakaback and the uh, manufacture of the crepe weave the development of ordinary and brighton honeycomb weaves and then we talked about the development of the bedford cord weaves and the construction of pk weaves have been discussed in this module